Okay, so here's a quick tutorial on how to use the JMARS uh, application to collect some crater data for the um, crater lab calculating age. When you open up JMARS, you should see this basic view, the uh, layers panel over here, tools across the top. The view should be centered at zero degrees, zero degrees on the prime meridian at the equator. And um, first thing you want to do is uh, select the site that you're going to be measuring craters on. In the assignment, there are two sites. They're both at 165 east longitude. One is at 30 degrees north. The other is at 30 degrees south. I'm just going to do on the equator at 165E. And hit return. And you'll see that the view has moved to a different location on Mars. We want to um, zoom in a little bit so that it's easier to recognize some of the smaller one and two kilometer size craters. So instead of the zoom being 32 um, pixels per degree, you want to bump that up to 64. So you'll have twice the resolution and only a quarter of the area. First thing you want to do probably is to measure how much area you are um, counting craters in. You'll need that to calculate the density. So you can just select the, the ruler tool and click uh, and go from the left or west side to the east side. You'll see that this is 888 kilometers uh, in east-west distance. You can go into your spreadsheet, um, in your worksheet, and type in 888, and then do the same thing to measure the north-south distance. And that's 482 in this case. That's 482 kilometers north-south, 888 kilometers east-west. So four two times eight eighty eight equals four hundred and eighty two thousand square kilometers. So you're, when you're looking at um, your view on JMARS, depending on the size of your screen, you may be looking at up to um, a million or anywhere from between a half a million and a million square kilometers for counting craters. So you need to add the crater counting layer. So if you click add new layer, uh, one of the options and it will where the position will vary depending on the uh, version of JMARS you're using. You can select the crater counting layer to add and close this down. The crater counting layer will be there. And if you have that selected still and go to the Edit Selected menu and say Open Docked. You can open the Crater Counting layer to look at all of its different um, pieces while still having it docked here in this uh, Layers view as opposed to having it out here. You're going to want to go to the Settings tab on the Crater Counting layer and set the new Crater Diameter to be a thousand meters or one kilometer 
And if you set the increment step size to 100 meters, uh, as long as you've got the crater counting layer selected and the pointing tool selected, when you go out onto the main view, you'll see that your pointer turns into a crater stamping tool that will allow you to stamp a circle of whatever color you've selected onto the crater so you can know that you've marked them. So I'm going to pick um, bright red. Uh, you're starting out with a circle that's one kilometer in size. You can use the plus and minus keys on your keyboard, or if you have a scroll wheel, you can use the scroll wheel to go smoothly up in kilometer increments. So two kilometers, three, four, five, and so forth. So a 40 kilometer crater would basically look that big. Use the minus key. So, for example, here's a f d indistinct crater down here. And looking closely, I don't think there are any craters inside it. So, I can select an appropriate size, click, and mark that crater. If I look on the Craters tab, you'll see that there is the first crater been added to the data set here. Now you want to go through and systematically mark all of the craters in your view. Uh, so it would be best to start in one area and just mark everything that looks like a crater. You're going to have more difficulty identifying the certainly the one kilometer craters. You probably will undercount maybe the two kilometer craters. Um, you should also realize Five kilometer crater. Here's a very tiny one kilometer crater. And you want to be pretty thorough to get a complete count of craters. I won't take the time to be thorough in this tutorial, otherwise, we'll be here for too long, more longer than you want to be here. Uh, but just go ahead and mark through. Now, um, Large craters might have small craters inside them. And so it looks like there's a small crater inside this crater. You'll want to mark the small craters first and then go ahead and mark the larger craters. Because if you mark the larger craters first, you're not going to be able to see the small craters that are inside. This is an interesting location because you can probably tell just by looking at it that an older surface that has some of these larger craters in it was later flooded with lava, which is why you've got all of this smooth young terrain over here. So technically it would be better to count the different areas separately because clearly the age of this terrain is different than the age of this terrain. But for the purposes of the exercise here, we're just uh, we're collecting data that you can use. For the tutorial, I'm going to worry about marking just the large craters. So that I'll have those craters category, size category um, available to analyze. Okay. So here is a crater that's um, at the edge of the screen, but it looks like it's more in than out. So I'll go ahead and count that one. I mean, if you can get a circle and have the pointer if you can get a circle over the crater and have the pointer still on the view, then it's basically in the view enough to be counted. 
Uh, here is another large crater that you might miss because it's kind of eroded. And it looks like that's a crater as well. And there are some smaller craters inside here. So we're going to take the time to mark a couple of these. And this is a lot faster with a scroll wheel than with the plus and minus keys, but you can get, uh, get to the point where you can do this. without taking a whole lot of time. Okay, So I'm doing a, a crappy job of marking all of the craters here, but it's enough to show what, uh, what is going on. And you see on the Craters tab that um, I've got a listing of all of these different sizes of craters. Uh, I clearly haven't done a good job marking all the little ones. Now there are several files that you're going to need to to save. Um, one thing you want to do is export your crater data after you have marked up both of your sites. The sites in the northern hemisphere will have a um, latitudes that are up around 30 degrees, a positive 30 degrees. The ones in the southern hemisphere will be uh, all around minus 30 degrees latitude, and they should all be around 165 or so, um, plus or minus. So if you go to export, and you can export your crater data. Someplace, um, let me go on the, my desktop where I put everything. And I'm going to create a new folder. Crater Lab. And I'm going to save this CSV file. This is just a raw data file where the values are separated by columns on each line in a format that you can take into Excel. Uh, you will have your two sites. I want you to save a visual record of how you've marked up the sites. So in this case I've only done one, but if I go to File and save Capture to PNG, I can say Crater Lab Site 1 and I'll stick that into the Crater uh, Lab and uh, then I would go down to my second site, mark those craters up, save a picture of it. The other thing you can do is save your whole session. And we'll save it as a .jmars file. And uh, that way you could actually start your lab on one computer, save that session file, open it up, and continue on right where you were. Let's assume I've done a good job of marking the craters in the two sites. I've downloaded those data files. At this point, I'm kind of done with JMARS, unless I want to actually count the different crater sizes here on the Craters tab. If I go into the Crater Lab here, yeah, I would have the two image files, the session file, and my crater data. If I bring that crater data into Excel, then I can sort the data um, from high to low, and that will make it easier for me to count up how many craters are in the different sizes of craters. Now, in Moodle, on the Geology tab, uh, for February 11th, when we were in the computer lab and doing the, getting started on the scraper counting, there's a link to download the worksheet, which is what I've got here. Um, in terms of 
submitting your files, if you go to the current section of the course, which we just started, there is under the March 7th, when we're having our midterm, an assignment for you to upload um, your four files. Your session file, your CSV file from exporting your crater data, and the two image files showing how you have marked up and counted the craters uh, for the two sites. So if we look at this, uh, we can see, do I have any craters that are more than 97 kilometers in size? And I don't. So I would put a zero there. And zero craters divided by 482,000 kilometers squared is going to be a density of zero. I just don't have any in that size category. Craters that are between 49 and 96 kilometers in size. I have one, two, three. So if I took three and divided by 482,000, I get six point two two times ten to the minus six. And it'd be easier if I had a pencil and drawing this in, but I'll use a little carrot sign here for power. <coughs> So, for the 64 kilometer size craters, which are down here, I have a number, a density of 6.22 times 10 to the minus 6. So, 6.22 times 10 to the minus 6 is about right here. And so, if I come over from there to the 64 kilometers, I can put a data point. And then for the 32 kilometer size bucket, those are craters that are between 25 and 48 kilometers. I can go in here and uh, I've only got two. So two divided by 482,000. is 4.15 times 10 to the minus 6. And so that would be a point over here that would be about in here somewhere. So already I'm seeing that I'm not I've not collected very good data for this uh, quick tutorial, but um, that should give you an idea of how things are set up.